Submarines. They're the quiet killers of the seas, bringing death and destruction from beneath the waves. From the first diesel-powered designs to the nuclear-powered giants of the Cold War, they have barely changed shape. But on the inside, they've evolved into the most destructive machines on the planet, capable of destroying ships, cities, and even entire countries. In conflicts spanning almost a century, the tactical role of these seagoing monsters has changed radically. The only constant lies in their ability to go deeper, faster, and quieter, ultimately achieving the one goal that all submarines strive for, stealth. Now, Top 10 will test, assess, and grade the most impressive and powerful submarines in history. Through two world wars, submarines dominated naval battles, destroying ships with guns and torpedoes. But with the dawn of the nuclear age came new missions, new targets. Today's subs provide a frontline nuclear deterrent and can patrol underwater for months at a time. They have also become faster and quieter than earlier designs. But a sub's legend isn't built on what it can do. It's built on the things it's done. Based on expert opinion, audience polls, and technical comparison, we've constructed a five-point matrix that will rank the top ten submarines of all time. At number ten, it's the sub that took the Cold War beneath the seas, creating a stealth platform with unimaginable nuclear firepower. George Washington class. Country of origin, United States. Type. Nuclear Ballistic Missile Submarine Power Plant 1 S5W PWR Nuclear Reactor Offensive Armament 16 Polaris A1 Missiles 6 21-inch Bow Torpedo Tubes Submerged Displacement 6,700 Tons In the 1950s, one fear gripped the imagination of the world. Global nuclear conflict was a real and present danger. Billions of lives were at stake. The United States of America was in the middle of an arms race with the Soviet Union and both sides were trying to grab the advantage. The Americans believed the answer lay in submarines. In the 50s, people get the idea that if you took nuclear missiles, which you would otherwise have in a silo in the ground on the land, and stick them in a submarine, they'd be a lot harder to find and a lot harder to destroy. To achieve this dream, the Americans would have to develop a sub capable of launching nuclear missiles while submerged. In 1958, they took a skipjack-class boat that was under construction and added a 130-foot missile compartment. Inside it, the first long-range Polaris nuclear missiles. We have to remember when the George Washington fires its first missile, you know, this is the era of the Cuban Missile Crisis. John Kennedy is president. He witnesses that first test. And there's a very, very famous note that he writes saying that anybody who witnessed that launch of the first Polaris A-1 would be absolutely convinced that it was one of the most important weapon systems ever created and would immediately sober any of America's enemies. The Washington class were classified as SSBNs. The crew just called them boomers. They could run deep, run silent, run long. On her first deployment, the Washington stayed submerged for 66 days, a world record. More importantly, it could launch a nuclear strike from 1,000 miles. America had stolen a lead in the arms race, and the Soviet Union was in shock. In 1960, 
for the first time, the Soviet Union can be attacked by surprise by the West, just as the Soviet Union was attacked in 1941. And that scares the hell out of the Soviets. Tensions between the two superpowers reached breaking point. In 1962, Soviet deployment of nuclear weapons in Cuba led to increased fears of a first strike. The George Washington, along with five other operational Polaris submarines, were deployed around the island. The world held its breath. In the end, the Soviets withdrew. The George Washington never had to fire its missiles, but arguably its sheer presence was critical in deterring the Soviet Union. The Washington has an impressive fear factor. Stealth is good, innovation is good, but service length and combat performance are average, leaving it 10th in our list. In ninth place, it's a record-breaking German boat that helped define the role submarines would play in 20th century naval combat. Type 31, U-boat. Country of origin, Germany. Type, medium-range attack submarine. Power plant, two diesel engines totaling 1,700 horsepower and two electric motors totaling 1,200 horsepower. Offensive armament, four 19.7-inch torpedo tubes. One 3.5-inch deck gun. Submerged displacement, 864 tons. There could have been nothing more frightening to merchant seamen in the First World War than somebody shouting, U-boat. 274 U-boats sank 12.8 million tons of shipping. In 1914, the British Navy ruled the waves. Her fleet patrolled the world. And although it had built a number of submarines, they were mostly regarded with distaste. There was a lot of suspicion around in all navies, skepticism, the sense there were ungentlemanly weapons. And it, it did offend the old guard. Admiral Sir Arthur Wilson said that all submariners in war should be hanged as pirates. The British reluctance to embrace submarines meant that their defenses against German U-boats were less than adequate. The submarine protection plan for the big British fleet base at Scapa Flow was to send out sailors in little rowboats with a mallet and the idea was that they'd row around the main base of the British High Seas Fleet and if they saw a periscope they would row their little rowboat up to the periscope and hit it with the mallet. Even more damaging was the British Admiralty's refusal to provide merchant shipping with convoy escorts. The German U-boats prospered. Arnoud de la Ferrière, legendary captain of the U-35, sank 194 ships, totaling 450,000 tons, a world record that will never be beaten. You had rich pickings in the Mediterranean, where Allied anti-submarine warfare measures were woefully inadequate, and he was able to operate on the surface without using up too many of his precious torpedoes. Like all other First World War submarines, the U-35 spent very little time beneath the waves. A submerged U-boat moved slower and drained valuable battery power. They also hardly ever used their torpedoes. The deck gun is considered to be a far more potent and also reliable weapon because the submarine torpedo is still under development and refinement and it's difficult to use it properly, especially against a moving target. In February 1917, the Germans declared unrestricted submarine warfare, taking over half a million tons of shipping a month. U-boats, which before the war had been casually dismissed, were pushing Britain to the brink of starvation. Heavily armed convoys began in July 1917. Attacking U-boats increasingly found themselves coming under heavy fire, and very soon their threat was neutralized. Despite this, the submarine had come of age. The Type 31 has a high fear factor. Combat performance is excellent. 
Innovation is average, stealth is average, and service length is low, putting this German Bruiser at number 9 in the top 10. At number 8, it's the Beast of the Seas, a Soviet Leviathan built to lurk beneath the Arctic ice, and if need be, rain nuclear weapons down on her Cold War enemies. Typhoon class. Country of origin, Soviet Union. Type, nuclear strategic missile submarine. Power plant, two PWR nuclear reactors. Offensive armament, 20 SSN-20 Sturgeon SLBMs. Six 21-inch torpedo tubes. Submerged displacement, 48,000 tons. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union constantly struggled to keep up with American weapon development. And despite the huge costs involved, submarines were no exception. It's amazing that the Soviets were able to design something so large and so maneuverable and so capable. What the Soviets achieved with the Typhoon was a state-of-the-art sub that dwarfed its rivals. If you look at the size of a Typhoon, we're talking about a couple of maybe two or three American football fields long. When it's submerged, it displaces 48,000 tons, more than a Second World War battleship. The Typhoon's sheer mass made her impressive to look at. More importantly for the crew, it meant a world of luxury older submariners could only dream of. It was planned for a very long deployment, 120 days. And when you look at the facilities on board, you know, saunas and swimming pools, and it was obviously designed to, to keep the crew interested and in the height of comfort. But the Typhoon wasn't a pleasure boat. It was a submersible missile silo capable of launching 20 ICBMs with up to 200 nuclear warheads. One of those submarines with ballistic missiles, nuclear tipped, with multiple re-entry vehicles could probably devastate the eastern seaboard of the United States. Just one submarine. As a class, the Typhoon was designed to sit out nuclear exchanges and launch a retaliatory strike. To achieve this, it had to be well hidden. Typhoon was essentially designed to be placed under the Arctic ice, embedded in that ice, and she would simply float with the ice over time, and she could launch on a moment's notice. Breaking through up to 12 feet of ice with its specially strengthened fin, the Typhoon's mission would effectively render her crew the last men on the planet. The Typhoon has a high fear factor. Stealth is excellent. Innovation and service length are good. But combat performance is average, putting this Soviet beast at number eight in our top ten list. In seventh place, it's the Japanese sub that thought it was an aircraft carrier. I-400 Sentoku class. Country of origin, Japan. Type, aircraft carrying submarine. Power plant, four diesel engines totaling 7,770 horsepower and four electric motors totaling 2,400 horsepower. Offensive armament, eight 21-inch bow torpedo tubes, one 5.5-inch deck gun, three M6A1 Siren seaplanes armed with torpedo or 1,763-pound bomb. Submerged displacement, 6,400 tons. Pearl Harbor, 1945. American top brass and stunned crewmen stand aboard a captured Japanese sub. Its history is short, but incredible. Four years earlier, 1941, the Japanese went to war with one of the newest and most ambitious submarine fleets in the world. The Imperial Japanese Navy has a technically sophisticated submarine force at the start of the Second World War. It's fairly large, they have about 70 submarines, and these submarines are designed to scout for the enemy battle fleet and to attack it as it closes on Japan. 
The I-400 Sentoku class, launched in 1945, was the largest submarine in the world. Her sumo wrestling proportions disguised incredible stamina. This beast could travel 37,500 miles before she'd stop. But the Sentoku's size wasn't just for show. Incredibly, its 115-foot forward section housed three Siren seaplanes. It had hangars on the front of the hull. It had those aeroplanes with their wings folded on floats inside cocoons. You could take this boat to the shores of your enemy and launch a strike. So the aim was that you had, it, in effect, a stealth aircraft carrier. The Japanese High Command began planning an audacious attack. The I-400 would launch its seaplanes against one of America's most vulnerable and strategic landmarks, the Panama Canal. If it could destroy one of the lock gates on the Pacific side, it would empty the canal. It would make it unusable for months. That was the prime reason that Japan went ahead with the I-400. Luckily for America, the mission never took off. Events in the Pacific overtook Japan, and the assault was shelled. At the end of the war, three I-400s were captured and studied by the Americans, proving that, strategically, the Sentoku was considered significant. They are innovative designs. They show an experimental competence that the Japanese were willing to make an investment. And they do show some distinctiveness in thinking out of the box that other navies were unwilling to do in most cases. In 1946, the Soviet military asked the Americans to hand over an I-400 for inspection. In response, the U.S. Navy scuttled them. That gives the sub a service length of just one year. Combat performance is average. Stealth is good. Innovation is high, as is fear factor, placing the I-400 seventh in our list. At number six, it's the 30-ton midget that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a 44,000-ton giant. X-Craft, country of origin, United Kingdom. Type Midget Submarine. Power plant, one Gardner diesel engine totaling 42 horsepower and one electric motor totaling 30 horsepower. Offensive armament, two 3,570 pound charges of Amatol high explosive or limpet mines. Submerged displacement, 30 tons. During the Second World War, both the Allied and Axis powers experimented with midget submarines. Some carried frogmen who would set charges on boats. Some fired torpedoes. Others were torpedoes, ridden to their destination by divers. Whatever the nation, though, their mission was the same to infiltrate harbors where bigger conventional submarines could not and would not go. Imagine a huge pile of explosive that you need to get past torpedo nets and past defensive systems to get them to the target. And now imagine that you don't have computers good enough to do that kind of navigation. What are you going to do? Why don't we just stick a human being in and have the human being navigate this bag of explosives onto a target so that it can sink something that's well defended. The British built a series of four-man midget submarines. Called X-Craft, they would target high-value German battleships. And in 1943, that meant the pride of Hitler's fleet, the Tirpitz. Harbored at the Kaw Fjord in Norway, its massive guns had to be silenced. It was described by Winston Churchill as the beast. Her very existence uh, posed a threat to, in particular, to the Arctic convoys. And if she had got out and uh, started marauding, uh, given her firepower and her pure enormity, and in a sense, what she stood for, the majesty of the Third Reich, Churchill wanted her off the map. On the 19th of September, 1943, 
three X-Craft made it to the fjord. Evading mines, nets, and machine gun fire, they would have to get beneath the turpits and release their side charges. It was David versus Goliath as the midget subs went up against a 44,000-ton battleship. X-5 was almost certainly sunk about a mile from the target. X-6 and X-7 battled their way in through the nets, bashed their way in. The X-Craft are able to place a one-ton explosive charge under her engine room, which cripples the battleship for the remainder of 1943 and most of 1944. The threat of the Tirpitz had been neutralized. On the 12th of November, 1944, while being repaired, it was attacked by 29 RAF Lancaster bombers. Three direct hits with 12,000-pound tall boy bombs tore open her hull. 971 German sailors were killed. Statistically, the crews of the X-Craft were hit even harder. It cost us a dozen lives to take Tirpitz out of the equation, to satisfy the Prime Minister. Worth it? Hell yes. Despite its size, the X-Craft continued to punch above its weight, taking out Italian warships in the Mediterranean, and playing a major role in the D-Day landings as a marker for the beachheads. As a result, combat performance is high, as are its scores for fear factor and stealth. Innovation and service length are average, putting this midget sub just outside our top five. Fifth in our list is an evolutionary underwater icon an American submarine that went where no sub had gone before. USS Nautilus. Country of origin, United States. Type, nuclear-powered submarine. Power plant, one S2WPWR nuclear reactor. Offensive armament, six 21-inch bow torpedo tubes. Submerged displacement, 4,092 tons. In the late 40s and early 50s, most subs could only stay submerged for a matter of hours. But with the dawn of the nuclear age came the prospect of unlimited power. The kind of power that might just allow a sub to stay submerged for days, weeks, months. Hyman Rickover, director of the Naval Reactors Branch, seized this vision and made it a reality. The challenge for him and his team was to develop a nuclear reactor that was small enough to fit inside the submarine hull and to make that safe enough um, to protect the crew from any potential risks from that reactor. With the shock of the nuclear strikes in Japan still fresh in the public's minds, opposition was fierce. The potential for disaster was on everybody's mind and Rickover trod carefully. This guy would not compromise when it came to safety, not because he was an angel, but because he realized one mistake. It's all over. One mistake, and nobody's ever going to trust that power ever again. So, he didn't make one mistake. Nautilus was launched on January 21st, 1954. 15,000 people watched First Lady Mamie Eisenhower breaking the traditional bottle of champagne across the bow. A year later, the Nautilus cast off and signaled the memorable and historic message underway on nuclear power. She immediately impressed the captain and crew with her speed and stealth. She was a sports car. She was the dream of every submariner since they first popped the hatch. Her external surfaces were completely free of any hydrodynamic drag. The Nautilus could travel 60,000 miles on a lump of uranium the size of a golf ball. A diesel-powered submarine would have required 3 million gallons of oil. The Soviets had fallen behind America. To prove that point, on August 3, 1958, Nautilus completed the first ever submerged voyage across the North Pole. The fact that Nautilus starts her career with a very well-publicized transit of the Arctic submerged is a demonstration 
of how powerful the United States Navy had become. The Nautilus became the building block from which all modern subs emerged. As a result, it scores high on innovation. Fear factor is excellent. Service length, stealth, and combat performance are good, putting the Nautilus at number five in our top ten. At number four, it's a big hitter, a sub with twice the firepower of a U-boat. T-Class. Country of origin, United Kingdom. Type. Ocean Patrol Attack Submarine. Power Plant. Two diesel engines totaling 5,000 horsepower and two electric motors totaling 2,900 horsepower. Offensive armament. Ten 21-inch bow torpedo tubes. One 4-inch deck gun. Submerged displacement, 1,560 tons. If you ask any British submariner, what is the iconic submarine, what is the best submarine, what's the most successful submarine class, it's going to say the T-Class, the T-Boats. The Royal Navy T-Class is one of submarines' great survivors. The first boat was ordered in 1936, and the last of its type was decommissioned 33 years later. The T-Class saw heavy action in the war against Germany, dealing out some serious punishment, but also suffering terrible losses as the battle for naval supremacy raged across the seas. British T-Class submarines enjoy several advantages over enemy submarines during the Second World War. Most notably, they have very good crews and they have excellent captains. Good seamanship would allow the T-Class to outrun her enemies. But if she had to turn and fight, her captains could rely on the most lethal torpedo armament of any Second World War submarine. She carried ten torpedo tubes. Six internal forward, two internal aft, and two external. So, um, a big punch. The T-Class takes the submarine and makes it almost a submersible destroyer. The T-Class was a T-Rex capable of opening her jaws and ripping smaller predators apart. Enemy submarines were a specialty for the British beast. They say today that the best anti-submarine weapon is another submarine. Well, that really started from the T-boats, that they were able to engage uh, other submarines and win. Uh, they did this by having reliable torpedoes and most importantly, having well-trained professional crews. Like all subs that dominate the seas, the T-Class had a huge impact on land battles. In 1942, Rommel's Africa Corps was battling Montgomery's troops in North Africa. The T-Class swept the coast, ultimately preventing supplies from reaching Rommel and giving the Allies a decisive victory. Without that battle in which the Royal Navy operated 94 submarines and lost 47, there's no doubt that the German Africa Corps would have reached Alexandria and would have captured the Suez Canal. By the end of the war, Royal Navy submarines had sunk or damaged by torpedo and gun two million tons of shipping, including 78 warships, 38 of which were submarines. They also lost 73 boats and 2,000 men. These are the boats where Victoria Crosses were won, highest British gallantry award. Not an award that's given away lightly. The iconic submarines. If you wanted to be a submariner in the Second World War, you wanted to be on a T-boat. With 31 years of action under her belt, the T-Class has outstanding service length. Fear factor is high. Combat performance is high. Innovation is average. Putting this big hitter just outside our top three subs. Coming in at number three is an American submarine that was as famous for its fearless captains as it was for its record-breaking kills. Gato class. Country of origin, United States. Type, attack submarine. Power plant, four diesel engines totaling 5,400 horsepower and four electric motors totaling 2,740 horsepower. Offensive armament, 
10 21 inch bow torpedo tubes, two 50 caliber and two 30 caliber machine guns, one 3 inch deck gun, submerged displacement 2,424 tons. They are the submarines that win the most successful submarine warfare campaign in history. First commissioned in 1936, the Gato was one of America's largest ever class of submarines. It was fast, uh, it was extremely long ranged, they were well armed, they had radar. A fearsome predator, its feeding ground was the Pacific, its prey, Japanese ships. During the Second World War, America adopted German U-boat tactics. Merchant shipping became fair game. And wolf packs were formed to attack convoys. Indeed, it's deadly when the American submarine force deploys wolf packs of its own. And because they can use the element of surprise and stay at sea longer than anyone expects, they are able to catch a lot of targets very quickly and relatively cheaply. The 73-strong Gato class churned up the ocean, ripping holes through ships. Japan's ability to resupply her beleaguered troops was rapidly compromised. When the Japanese are trying to hold on to Guadalcanal, their soldiers are slicing up grains of rice because they have no supplies because the submarine force of the American Pacific Fleet is such a threat. Much of this success was down to a handful of hugely expert, daring captains. Men like Lieutenant Commander Dudley Mush Morton. Known as the One Boat Wolfpack, Mush and the men on board the USS Wahoo sank 19 ships, totaling 55,000 tons. He detested the Japanese with a passion that was unbelievable. But he was also somebody who knew how to fight his submarine very well. He knew every aspect of his boat knew how to evade well. In other words, the submarine and its crew were an extension of his being. The Gato sent more than 1.7 million tons of hot, twisted metal to the seabed. The figures were impressive, but it could have been a lot more. Time and again, American torpedoes failed to explode on impact. But the malfunction Gato crew feared most was the dreaded circular run. The torpedo would come back around at the submarine rather than headed for its target. So you would lose a vessel because we'd essentially commit suicide, unwittingly. Eventually, most of the problems with torpedoes were ironed out. By the end of the Pacific campaign, the American submarine force had destroyed 30% of the Japanese Navy and over 60% of the Japanese merchant fleet. The Gato has outstanding combat performance and a high fear factor. Innovation is good. Service length is good, and stealth is average, putting it at number three in our top ten. At number two, it's a billion-dollar sub with state-of-the-art technology. Seawolf class. Country of origin, United States. Type, nuclear attack submarine. Power plant, one General Electric PWR S6W nuclear reactor. Offensive armament, eight 26 inch torpedo tubes and 12 Tomahawk TLAM N launch tubes. Submerged displacement, 9,150 tons. During the Cold War, American hunter killer subs played a deadly game of cat and mouse with the Soviet nuclear fleet. Their SSBNs had to be shadowed and monitored. Increasingly, though, the U.S. Navy were chasing shadows. Soviet submarines were getting quieter. To combat this, America spent $13 billion on a new class of silent assassins. Commissioned in July 1997, Seawolf is the first new top-to-bottom U.S. attack submarine designed since the 1970s. Seven million different parts were used in its construction. The end result is a deadly quiet, heavily armed sub with enough computing power to master any situation.
Seawolf would be an incredibly difficult submarine to counter. It can dominate uh, the undersea battle space very easily, and it would be a very tough opponent in any sort of conflict. The primary mission of the Seawolf was to destroy Soviet ballistic missile submarines before they could attack American targets. The only problem was that by the time Seawolf hit the seas, the Cold War was over. Using state-of-the-art eavesdropping technology, the Seawolf has become an integral part of the modern battlefield, monitoring enemies from a position of safety. It can also play a significant role in land battles. They are equipped with a wide variety of weapons. Most notably, they have inherited the Tomahawk land attack missile that allows them to strike at targets deep inland. The Seawolf class has also become a prime mover in combat operations, inserting Navy SEALs into hot combat zones. If you want to take people and put them on a beach halfway around the world, Seawolf will do it brilliantly. No one will see the submarine coming. Nobody will see the rubber dinghy paddling ashore, and nobody will see the submarine leaving. In 2004, a newer generation of American subs emerged, the Virginia class. A sub built for the 21st century, it took the best of the seawolf, but made it cheaper. The submarine of the future will be a cruise missile carrying hunter killer with ballistic missiles in, and the Seawolf will be looked at as the prototype for that. It is truly um, a magnificent submarine. The Seawolf scores high marks for innovation. Stealth is excellent. Combat performance is good. Fear factor is good. But with other newer American classes hitting the seas, Seawolf's service length is average, making it the second best sub in our top 10. Before we find out what our number one sub is, it's time to count down the top ten. At ten, it's America's first strategic nuclear submarine, the USS George Washington. At nine, it's Germany's first World War U-boat. These subs sank millions of tons of shipping and rewrote naval rule books. At number eight, it's the biggest sub ever built, the Russian Typhoon class. In seventh spot, the sub that thought it was an aircraft carrier, the Japanese I-400. At six, it's a midget sub that packed an awesome punch, the British X-Craft. Fifth, it's a true legend. The Nautilus was the world's first nuclear-powered sub. At number four, a big hitter, the British Second World War T-Class had ten torpedo tubes. At three, it's the legendary Gato class, the subs that helped America win the Pacific War. And just missing out on the top spot, it's the most expensive submarine ever built, the awesome Seawolf. And finally at number one, the best of the best, the submarine class that spawned legendary captains and almost gave Germany a decisive victory in the Second World War. Type 7, U-Boat. Country of origin, Germany. Type, medium range attack submarine. Power plant. Four diesel engines totaling 3,200 horsepower and two electric motors totaling 750 horsepower. Offensive armament, five 21 inch torpedo tubes. One 3.5 inch deck gun. Submerged displacement, 857 tons. The Type 7 U-boat is unarguably the most important submarine of the Second World War. It challenges the most powerful, not one, but the most powerful two navies in the world. And it succeeds in sinking millions of tons of their merchant ships and dozens of their warships. The Type 7 was the workhorse of Germany's Second World War submarine fleet. Over 700 were constructed, making it the largest class of subs ever built. The Type 7 boasted a number of improvements, slightly greater depth, excellent hydrophones, dependable weaponry, and then a very, very, very fast dive rate. A well-handled Type 7 could disappear from the surface of the sea within 20 seconds. 
Its fast dive, small profile, and nimble handling gave the Type 7 the one quality that all submarines strive for, stealth. On October 14, 1939, Gunter Prien risked shallow water, tricky currents, and detection by defenders to penetrate the Royal Navy's base at Scapa Flow. With three torpedoes, he sank the British battleship, the Royal Oak, and then escaped unharmed. Well, it even drew words of admiration from Winston Churchill, who said it was the most astonishing feat. And in a sense, that kicked off the U-boat war in a truly memorable fashion. Admiral Carl Dernitz was convinced his U-boats could destroy the Allies, and he set about proving it. By communicating with his boats, he was able to assemble wolf packs, groups of up to 20 U-boats, which would ambush merchant convoys. It worked. U-boats were destroying Allied shipping. Their captains became heroes of the fatherland. Eric Topp was one of these elite men. His boat, the U-552, was nicknamed the Red Devil. In March and April of 1942, he sank eight ships for a total of 45,731 tons, a feat that brought recognition from the Fuhrer himself. He made his crew feel invincible, and they would have followed him to the gates of hell and back. And in many cases, they did. The top five most successful Type 7s sank 221 ships between them. Over one million tons of metal vanished beneath the waves, robbing the Allies of men, material, and perhaps most importantly, the hope that Europe could be saved. Churchill says the only thing that keeps him awake at night is the concern about the U-boats cutting Great Britain off from the rest of the Empire and indeed from the United States. And Churchill is right. But then in 1943, the tide turned for Hitler's U-boats. At the Casablanca conference, Allied leaders resolved to end the submarine menace. Protective convoys were stepped up across the Atlantic. The British had also cracked the German Enigma machine allowing them to decipher the orders being sent to the U-boat fleet. Once the U-boats were the hunters, now they were the hunted. With the exception of the Japanese kamikaze arm, the submarine forces suffered the highest loss rates during the Second World War. In the case of the U-boat force, those losses are cataclysmic. The crews gave the U-boats a new nickname, Iron Coffins. But despite their losses, the Type 7 U-boat remains one of the most influential weapons of the Second World War. In five years of intense combat, the U-boat sank 2,779 ships for a total of 14.1 million tons. The Type 7 class sinks more enemy merchant shipping than any other type of submarine in the conflict, suffers the highest losses of any submarine in the conflict, but causes the greatest fear and the most anxiety to the largest number of nations on Earth at the time it is deployed. The Type 7 U-boat that fought its way through the hardest naval campaign in history has also fought its way to the top of our list. It scores maximum marks for fear factor and combat performance. Innovation is excellent. Stealth and service length are impressive, making this German legend our number one.